everybody, welcome back to Playformance Parkour Online. Today, we're going to be practicing some landing and falling skills. But before we do that, let's get ourselves all warmed up. Let's go. Alright everybody, let's get straight into this warm up. What we're going to be doing first is we're going to be doing high knees for 10 seconds. Alright, you guys ready? Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Alright, now you're going to find yourself a wall just to support yourself. And you're going to go onto one foot like this and raise up five times like this. One, two, three, four, five, and then switch to the other foot. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, what you're going to do after doing that, we're going to roll our ankles each way, five rotations. So like this, one, two, three, four, and five. Now go the other way. One, two, three, four, and five. Other foot. One, two, three, four, five. Do the other way. If you need something to balance onto, you can use a wall. Other way. One, two, three, four, and five. Now to do some strength, what we're going to do is we're going to do five push-ups. So, you can either do it on your knees and then go down like so, or you can go onto your feet and do it like this. So, let's get started. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, now a fun little activity my friend told me to incorporate into this workout is to get yourself a magical flying broom Hop on, I'm still kind of learning. Hop on, and then fly around your house. Woo! You go up onto some furniture, if it's okay with your parents, just fly around, do it for 20 seconds. One, you go over here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, let's actually cut down to 10, nine, and 10, woo! All right. Now that we're all warmed up, let's get straight into the parkour moves. If you need to get water first, go ahead, pause the video and do that. I'll see you guys in a second. Woo! Welcome back everybody. Let's get into our first parkour move today, which is just gonna be a drop landing. So, get up onto your furniture, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just step off and then you're gonna absorb into the ground like this. And then land. Now the reason you wanna do that is because if you were to jump off and then just land like that, it could put a lot of stress on your knees, your ankles, and it could even hurt your head a little bit because of all the force. So, just do that again. Step off, absorb the landing by like doing a little squat. Just practice that a little bit because we're going to be using that later on in this video. See you in the next move. All right, everyone. Next move we're going to be doing is we're going to be reviewing our parkour roll and just practicing that in our house. So if you have a soft floor to practice this on, then I would recommend doing that. I only have a hardwood floor, but that's okay because it'll make me better at parkour rolls. So when I like, when I do this, I like to imagine myself in a little rectangle around me. I just get on on my hands and knees like this, and then I'll make a little triangle out of my hands. And depending on which shoulder I'm gonna go over, in this case, I'm gonna go over my right one, I'm gonna take my little triangle that I've made and put it in the corner of the rectangle right here. And then, once I do that, I'm gonna get my feet ready so I have my right foot right here, and that's the foot that I'm gonna actually be like pushing off of, and this, my left foot is just gonna be coming up and following. So then, once I go over, I'm gonna guide myself down with my arms, taking off some of the pressure, and I wanna make sure that I'm not landing on top of my shoulder right here. I actually want to 
start the roll back here on my upper back because if you land on the top of your shoulder, it could cause an injury. So let's get back into that first position right here. And then once you start to actually roll down, you're gonna start to tuck your head into your arm right here. So if I was going over my left side, then I would tuck my head in to the right this way. But since I'm going over my right shoulder, I'm gonna tuck my head in this way like this. So first like this, then I get my little triangle spot, get up onto my legs. And I just have this line here to just kind of see how straight I'm going with my rolls. And then once I'm ready, I'm gonna push off of my right foot right here and then guide myself down into the roll. All right. Here we go. So just practice that around your house, just getting really good at your rolls. And once you feel confident on one side, try and do it on the other side. All right, that was forward parkour roll. See you in the next one. All right, everyone. So next move is gonna be called run to jump to roll. Now, since we're in our houses right now, we don't have a lot of space to do that. So we're gonna change this a little bit where you just stand in one spot, jump, and then hit the ground and then roll. So it's gonna look a little something like this. Now make sure you're good and confident with your rolls because especially if you're on a hard floor like I am, you wanna make sure that you're really going over your shoulder and not landing on it so that you don't injure it. So what you're gonna do, the idea is you're just gonna jump and then as soon as you land, you're gonna go straight into your roll. So it'll look something a little like this. So practice that. Again, if you have a softer surface, I recommend doing it on that. But if you do it on a hard surface, just make sure you're being safe and it'll make you better at doing parkour rolls. So let's move on to the next move. If you would like, go ahead and get some water. All right, everybody. So what we're gonna be doing is kind of continuing on what we just did, doing like a jump and then a roll, except now we're actually gonna get higher up. So go ahead and get onto your couch or whatever you're using. And then you're gonna jump and then go straight to your roll. Now make sure that you're feeling confident of doing your jump to roll before trying this, because this is a lot more impact that you could take on your shoulder. So making sure that you're still going over. And it's gonna look a little something like this. And there we go. All right, practice that for a bit. That was drop to roll. I'll see you in the next one. All right, everyone. So now we're gonna be practicing our backward roll. Now, the reason I'm outside is I wanna do this on a nice soft surface. So I decided to go out onto my grass right here and practice this. If you have a carpet, then go ahead and practice this on that. I highly suggest practicing this on a soft surface before you move to a hard surface. So let's get straight into it. So first, I just want you guys to just like start off by just squatting down like this and then you're simply just going to pick a shoulder that you're going to go over. I'm going to go over my right shoulder right here. And as I start to go, I'm going to then tuck my head over to the left side so that when I go over my right shoulder, I don't hit my head on the ground. And then what you're going to do is you're going to push off with your legs and then tuck in with your knees to make you go over. And then put your hands down and it looks something like this. It's just a simple rollover. Now do that a couple times and once you feel good with it, then actually going to stand up like this and then you're going to squat down and then you'll sit down and then that's when you would do your roll. So it looks something like this. And then slowly you'll start to push off with your hands and then you'll land more standing up. Something like this. All right. So this is useful for if you're jumping off to something and you land backwards, then you can break your fall. For example, if I were to be jumping off something backwards and then land, that's when you would use your roll to break your fall. All right, that was backward roll. Let's move on to the next one.
All right, everyone, so now we're gonna be using a wall. So if you have one available to you, go ahead, get your shoes on and get some water before we start. If you don't have a wall available, go ahead and just skip through the video and it's gonna be a fun game. So let's get straight into it. All right, the first move that we're gonna be practicing is just a nice simple dash down. And what that's gonna look like is go ahead, get up on your wall, And then you're just gonna sit down like this on it. And then you're gonna have your hands on the outside of your leg, just like so. And then you're just gonna simply push yourself off with your arms and let yourself down. And then when you land, make sure you absorb into the ground so that it doesn't put any stress on your knees. So it looks something like this. There you go. And you see how I start to like squat down? That's again, using like what we did at the very beginning of the video to absorb into the ground and make sure that we don't put any strain on our knees. All right, that was dash down. Let's go to the next one. All right, the next one is just gonna be a dash dismount. Now this is just to give what we just did some style. It's gonna be replicating a dash vault where you would go over with your legs first and then put your hands down on whatever you're going over. And this is just gonna give this a little extra style. So let's go ahead, get up onto our wall. And then when we go off, this time we're gonna like flare our legs out so that it makes it look like we're doing an actual dash ball. So I'm gonna put my hands in the same spot like last time, and then I'm gonna kick my legs forward and then push off with my arms. It's gonna look something like this. And then I'm making sure to absorb the landing again. All right, let's practice this a few times. So getting up. Kicking out, pushing off, and then landing. All right, go ahead and do that for a little bit just to get really good at it. And you can even flare your legs a little bit like this. You could, What you could do is kick one leg out and then the other one follow it. So it'd be something like this. You know, just make it your own little move. Whatever feels most comfortable to you, stick with that and then get really good at it. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, next one is gonna be called a standing dash down. Now, what that's gonna look like is basically just a dash down, except you start standing up on your wall and then you work your way down. So, let's go ahead, get on our wall. This time we're gonna stand up on it, just like so. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start to squat down. And then once you get close enough to where your arms can reach the wall, that's when you would then support yourself, push yourself off, and absorb that landing. All right, so that was kind of slow, so practice doing that before you actually start to do it fast. So let's do it again slow. Standing up, slowly squatting down, putting your hands down, push off. Now let's do it fast once you've gotten comfortable with that. Start standing up, down, push up, land. All right, now, what all these are good for is that, let's say you were to do a climb up on one side of the wall, and then you needed to get down super fast. That's what that would be good for, is to just be able to go from standing up and then straight back down. All right, everyone, so go ahead, get some water, and let's move on to the game. All right, see you later, Coach Kagan. Hello witches and wizards, I'm Harry Potter and today I'm going to be showing you how to play a fun parkour quidditch game. So, get yourself a broomstick and let's start doing some flying magic. Woo! Hello witches and wizards. So, as you can see behind me, this is going to be our little playing area. And what you're going to need for this game is, of course, your magical flying broomstick and a quaffle ball. Now, I didn't have an actual ball to play with, so what I did is I took a shirt and a rubber band to make it kind of like a ball shape. If you have a ball, perfect. Now, let's get into the rules. So, what you're always gonna have to do is have your broomstick in between your legs. You can never go through the obstacle course with just the broom in your hand off to the side. It has to always be in between your legs like this as if you're actually flying around. Now, as you can see here, I have two pillows at each end. 
Each one of those represents a goal for the two players that are playing. You would start off on your goal, and someone would start off with the cluffle ball, and then you would try to get through the opposite course without touching the ground to get to the other person's goal, and then you would score a point. Now, if you get tagged by the other player, let's say going through the obstacle course, let's see I get tagged here, I'd have to immediately drop the cluffle ball, go back to my goal right here, and then I could go back and try and tag them again. If you step off, you have to, again, drop the cluffle ball right away, go back to here. You can also incorporate furniture, like I have here. So there's a way to go here, you go up, down, and then over to the other person's goal. Of course, just make sure that stepping on all these items is okay with your parents. And as you can see, this is quite a small area that I have, and it'd be very difficult to score any points since there's only really two ways to go. So try and make this as big as you want, and try to like go through your entire house if you can, because that would be pretty cool. Another thing is, you can make the limit of points however much you want. So like, let's say you wanted the game to be pretty short, you can make it two points is all you need to win. Or if you wanted the game to be a little longer, five, seven, you know, so on. Make the, the winning point as many as you would like. Now, if there's a third person, what you can do is they can pretend to be a golden snitch. And what that person will do is they don't need a broom because they have their little, little wings. And they'll just try to run through the obstacle course without getting tagged by either one of the players. If they do get tagged, then whoever tagged them wins the game immediately. So just to clarify, the snitch doesn't need to step on the obstacles. They can if they would like, but they can walk on the ground. And they just try to run through and not get tagged. So make sure you're being safe with your brooms and have a good time with the game. If the obstacle course is getting too easy for you guys and you're memorizing it, switch it up a bunch. And then just make it fun, make it your game, and have a good time. All right, witches and wizards, I'll see you all later. All right, everyone, I hope you all enjoyed that game that Harry Potter showed us how to play. But now let's move on to a fun little activity slash learning a new trick. So, if you're sitting in your house and you're like, hmm, you know what? I want to learn a new trick. And you see a basketball, and you're like, hmm, all right, what can I do with this? So, we're going to learn how to spin it on your finger. So, this could take a while. I'm still practicing it, but it's going to be a really fun party trick. You could just be like, Go up to your friends and then just spin a ball and be like, whoa, that's pretty cool that you can do that. I wish I could do that. Be like, yeah, I know, I'm super awesome. So <laughs> what you're going to do is whatever hand is your dominant hand, so like what hand you write with, you would then, that's the hand that you're going to actually spin the ball on. So when I do this, I like to hold my fingers like this, and then this is where the ball actually spin. This finger is just for support, so supporting this finger for the ball to spin on. And to get that initial spin, I just kind of hold the ball like this, and then I'll twist it like this to get it going, and then I'll bring it up onto my fingers just like this. And then with my left hand, I also give it a little spin to get it going. So let's try it. Oop, not quite. There you go. And just getting used to getting the balance of it. And maybe you use, maybe you'll have your hands a little differently when you do it. You know, maybe you'll have your fingers pointing a different way. Maybe you'll use a different finger. You could use your pointer finger if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. It's just whatever feels most natural to you. And then once you get pretty good at that, you can actually start to, once it's spinning on your finger, you can continue to spin it with your other hand to keep it going just like that all right everyone i hope you all enjoyed this video again with the parkour moves just keep practicing all the ones through this video you don't have to do it as many times as i did in the video i want you to just keep pushing yourself and getting better and better 
while we're stuck in our houses. So be safe, and I'll see you all later.